words are not enough is the debut album, but I thought we could start from the beginning. And what kind of ideas did you have when starting the band in 2017? Yeah, definitely. So um, basically, you know, I, as a musician, I'm always writing music, right? Um, and, you know, sometimes I write something that fits for strife, um, you know, or sometimes I was writing something that fit for will be free. And then I started writing these other songs that didn't really fit for either. You know, they were a little more uh, stripped down and, and raw, a little more on the punk side than would fit for strife, a little more aggressive than will be free. So I put this idea together, you know, um, that I was going to start a new project. Right. I had a, um, I had a drummer in mind and, you know, we were going to record the songs and, and maybe have a singer. I had a couple of people in mind that, you know, would potentially sing originally. Um, and, you know, I, I think it got to a point um, with both bands where, you know, you, the, the singer could kind of control what the band does, right? Like if the singer doesn't want to do it, you can't really do it. Um, and so, you know, I, I thought it could be, it, it would be kind of liberating to have a band where it's like, hey, I could, you know, if I sing, you know, I, I could obviously get a lineup, but if a guitar player can't do it, we can get a fill in. If, if a bass player can't do a show, we get somebody to come in. And as like, you know, it, it'll really allow me to do a little bit more. So, you know, we recorded the songs and, you know, I, I basically, you know, decided to give singing a shot. Um, and I was like, you know, if this turns out cool, I'll do it. If it does it, back to square one, I'll, I'll look for a singer. Um, you know, I had tried singing in the past, you know, years ago, and it's very hard. Uh, but I think now just the way the recording process has changed. So, you know, being able to go line by line and, you know, just little recording tricks that maybe uh, I didn't know of in the past or weren't really being utilized in the past um, really built my confidence and, and allowed me to um, just to do um, vocals and, and, and that I was proud of. So I, I did the, uh, you know, we did the demo in the first seven inch in the same session. Um, and I was really happy with that, how that turned out. And as I, you know, as you sing, your voice gets stronger. So it's, it's not something you just go in a studio and belt out these songs and it's going to work. You know, it's like, you really got to build up your voice, um, to get it, um, strong, you know, so it did take time. And I think, you know, through the course of recording like two seven inches and some comp songs and then finally the LP, like I'm really, really happy with, uh, with how my voice turned out and, and uh, really happy with the, with the new record. And, and um, yeah, it's been great. Talking about the new record, uh, how was the writing and recording process? You know, we've, we've been having the pandemic and all. Yeah. So that, that was the thing is, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always writing songs. So like I have a guitar in my living room. I'll, I'll pick it up. I'll write a song, record it, put it in my phone, kind of label it like stri new strife song, new birth old city song, new world be free song or new song. That sounds like whatever, you know, um, for something else. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly just recording ideas, um, as they come. And, you know, it, it it's funny. I actually had an entire Berthold City <laughs> record uh, record written before, uh, and my phone crashed. I lost everything. So I think once the pandemic hit, I was like, "Yeah, we really gotta uh, we gotta utilize this time. We we need to put out a record." And so once uh, we kind of had that goal in mind, I knew Nick was going to be home. Tara wasn't going to be able to tour, right? So I was like, "Hey, you know, I want to do this. When when could we?" start um and then i just start recording songs and, and 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 you know the way my process works is like i'll just try to get an idea down um so sometimes i'll just write one part or or maybe a verse and a chorus then i'll go back and then i'll add to it but i try not to be too critical or overthink things 
and rather just get more spontaneous ideas down. And I think that's a nice way to, uh, it's just a way that I feel takes the pressure off uh, songwriting. Right. Um, and it, and it actually allowed me to kind of uh, create an, 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 a more interesting group of songs, right? You know, you're doing an album, you don't want 12 songs that sound all the same. So um, it allowed me to really focus on on writing different songs. Um, and, you know, we probably had, you know, whatever, 20, 20 ideas. And basically I'd go, I'd take these ideas and I'd go to Nick's studio and, you know, it was a pandemic, so it'd just be me and Nick. And the nice thing was Nick could play drums, Nick could record. So we take these ideas and then um, really he would produce them and we'd, we'd focus on, you know, three songs at a time and really um, dial in the song structures and the arrangements. And, you know, sometimes they would be exactly how I, how I wrote them. Sometimes they'd be completely different. Sometimes we take two songs and put them together, you know, um, and really um, work on just just making the material as as good as possible. Uh, so from there, you know, once we had, you know, I think uh, demos, we had demos for 14 songs. Then we set up um, the studio time, um, tracked with our drummer, um, some of the guys for the band were able to come to the studio and play others with kids, you know, didn't want to take that risk. So, um, but um, yeah, at that time we were able to really focus. Good thing is I could play guitar. So, right. So I played guitar on the record. Um, and then, um, you know, we did the, uh, the basic tracks. We, I think we did the drums maybe all in one day, um, did the bass in a, in a day or two. And then, um, all the guitars and then obviously the um the vocals took a while you know it's like not only i i took those recordings worked on you know the vocal arrangements and the lyrics and every time i had you know a new song i'd schedule a time you know with nick like hey i got the song done let's go in and track it like so as i was writing them i'd go in and track it instead of like waiting till i had lyrics to 14 songs you know we recorded 14 and used 12 for the record so instead of waiting until I had lyrics for all 14 songs, trying to do them all at once, my voice isn't that strong anyway. So it's like my voice sounds the best if I do, you know, one song at a time. Um, you know, certain days I did two, but, you know, um, I can't sing a whole record in one day. Like my voice isn't going to sound as strong as I want it. Um, so it was a really uh, it was a really streamlined process. Um, Nick's a great producer and had a lot of great ideas and really, you know, we just wanted to focus on just making the best record that we can, making 12 songs that don't all sound the same um, and kind of just exploring different influences um, while still keeping, you know, true to the Berthold City sound that we kind of established on the first two records, right? Talking about the lyrics, uh, what are these uh, 12 songs about? I mean, every song's different, right? Um, that that's the other thing. So some some tackle um, more personal issues. Um, um, other are, you know, I would say a bit political. Um, you know, I, I think again, the goal is not just to write about one specific thing and to write about, you know, different things that are, you know maybe are, are going on in, in the world or in our lives personally. Um, and um, yeah, I think we, we, I kind of cover a, a wide range of topics. Um, you know, some of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite songs lyrically, um, there's a song called the pharmacist and, and that's kind of um, it's loose, loosely based on a, on a documentary by the same name called the pharmacist. And this was about a, um, a man who was a pharmacist and his son got addicted to op opioids and ended up um, moving from opioids to heroin, ended up getting killed in a drug deal. And basically this, this pharmacist took on the whole um, 
pharmaceutical industry and um and um and one uh so so it's a really interesting documentary and you know and in my eyes was a pretty unique take on like a theme for a straight edge song right it, it's like you know sure everyone could say kill your local drug dealer or some some mm-hmm. some shit like that but like you know the real cartel and the real drug dealers are these white collar pharmaceutical companies and it's legal and you know and you know they destroyed millions and millions of lives it's a it's a huge problem in in our country it's a huge problem globally and you know unfortunately you know people m- many people think that because a drug is legal and you get a prescription for it that it's okay um and it's not going to hurt them it's not going to kill them um you know i've had many friends who taken pills and went to sleep and never woke up. Right. Um, and so, so it's, uh, and it's a, and it's a real gateway drug. Cause once you can't get these prescriptions, like you're basically hooked on legal heroin. And once you can't, when you can no longer get these prescriptions, then you turn to heroin, right. Street drug. So that, that was one of, uh, you know, I, I, I watched that documentary is very inspiring. Um, and I would just wanted to, you know, write a unique take on, you know, what, what could be a straight edge song, but it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a global issue as well. Um, and um, I, I really like how that song, um, song turned out. 